we're going to next hear from two clinics. Um, the first one is the Golden Point Medical Centre and then Health E Medical um, on their trial activity in, um, through the SPIDER program um, of inclusive, uh, inclusive of patient mapping in the framework they're using to implement quality improvement activities and the outcomes identifying all touch points for a patient with the clinic and creating a shared vision for a whole of clinic approach to increasing accessibility for people with an intellectual disability. So um, from Golden Point Medical Centre, we'll be hearing from uh, Anesh Cherian. Uh, Anesh is based out of Ballarat with his family, uh, his wife Nisha and his twin girls. Their journey started in Backers Marsh. Um, they now run, they run a medical specialist service um, called Dove Touch Specialists um, for children, um, together with a paediatrician uh, and other allied health practitioners. Um, presently, they have over 2,000 children coming from across the state um, to receive special care. The children present with multiple needs, such as developmental delays, behavioural and medical um, issues. This journey has led them to open a GP place, uh, so Golden Point Medical Centre in Ballarat, for these children and parents to help provide a safe and welcoming place so the children and others coming through are getting continued help. So I'll pass over to Anesh. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Um, I guess I, I just want to first thank, uh, thank you for inviting myself to be here. Um, I probably want to start off by saying some of the speakers that we've had from Auntie Jane, Uli and the others, um, I think one of the key things for me was to listen and uh, this listening process has not been easy. So it, it has uh, taken a lot of time, still is, there's a lot of training, uh, PHN has been great, there's a lot of people there that, that constantly support. So. It's, it's a journey, it still is. Um, so what I'd like to do is probably start off there, just give you guys a quick high level view on what we've done and, and we, it, it's, still, it's still evolving. Um, so out in Ballarat where we have the clinic, um, um, we have a, a forms. So we started off the center by having forms and we had, I think, uh, four forms, four pages to start off with just to capture things with the patients. And within uh, a few patients conversations, we realized that, hang on, people are sitting there and they're just feeling overwhelmed, just trying to fill the form to just meet the GP. All that they've come to do is get care, get attention, uh, get help. Um, and sometimes with the children running around, the parents themselves get overwhelmed. So that um, started off. So that that journey took us from changing the forms to online so that patients can fill up, the families can fill up in their space, in their time um, at, at home. And, and that sort of gave them the space to fill up, gave them the room to add more things, gave them the room to avoid um, things that they would have otherwise missed. And then it gave room for more conversation. So forms started becoming online. Um, and then from there, we realized that people want to make bookings. And we realized that the software was a limiting factor. So we had to change the software. And the whole software had to be canned. And then we had to change the software to just allow the patients to book, the reception staff to be able to have conversations, to just simply put it in, have the conversation with the um, patients coming in the nurses to do their bit of work and then for the doctors to have it. So it, it became a uh, revolving thing where one led to the other. So the website had to be changed, which still is. The whole medical center layout had to be changed. We had chairs in a way that people felt, um, I guess, intimidated. They were like, OK, well, hang on. I want my space. I want my room. And, and that sort of gave us at the uh, we, we had to change so that children can run, children can be around, but at the same time, if they wanted to sit, uh, that space was there. Um, so that was that. I'm going to go on to the next slide there. And um, just quickly on that front, um, so that change from an organizational perspective, changes that we did were forms, giving access to information so that when people have information, they get the information, ability to make the booking, 
And then we had to identify staff there. So reception staff, this is what you can do. We, we give them space to have a conversation. What trainings do we need for that? So we had trainings that we had to dedicate to the reception, separate for the nurse, separate for the doctors, and even simple things like calling the patient back. That became a big roadblock in terms of how we have to do it. So sometimes it had to be a simple text message had challenges. So we had to make sure that people, um, some people wanted to be called. So we give the time to give them a call, find out the information, and they have specific time to make the booking. So those were things, and it still is a learning thing for us. Um, in terms of the different patients that we've involved in the journey, there were a whole lot of parents um, with, with children with special needs. So we've actually sat with these mothers with, with predominantly mothers and, and then the dads in some instances, but to, just to sit with them and say, what is a challenge? And, and some of the conversation was, um, I don't feel safe. Some of the conversation was, I feel rushed. So those were conversations that, that took us to actually peel the model on what do we need to provide? What are people looking for? Um, so yeah, that, that was that there. Um, we'll go on to the next slide there. In terms of um, actions that we've taken, um, my wife and myself, uh, we, we just had to realize that we just can't do it normal. Um, if, if we do it exactly the same way as everything else out there, these people feel rushed. They don't feel, um, they don't feel answered. They don't feel being listened to. And, and that was hard because uh, my wife tells me that I'm not a good listener, so then I had to practice listening myself, still am. And it, it sort of took us on that journey, and it still is. It's one step at a time. Um, but we had to take ownership at the start, from the from the beginning, from the top, saying that, okay, no, we, we just have to be ready to change, whatever it might be. Um, upskilling staff, we we have staff, and, and sometimes staff feel overwhelmed. If, if you have people coming in and, and they're not equipped, we just realized that, that that won't be there. So it, be, it came into a process where we had to have this constant conversation with them, change things, have templates, change um, environments, allow them to talk out, allow them to vent out if that had to be there. Systems, just like I explained before, we had to change our whole software. The whole software had to be changed. Get, get the IT person in, change the whole thing, get it happening so that people, when they are looking for information, wanting to access, they've got it access, they've got it ready for them. In the clinic, we had to um, make sure that we are looking at the patient, looking at the people and giving them a conversation, giving them an opportunity to say, hi, why, how are you? What do you want? What can we do for you? Those things that we've started has helped and we're still improving on that. The next slide. Um, in terms of the different impacts and, and where we've done, we can say that it's increased patient satisfaction. Um, it, it has improved um, our um, layout in terms of how we are meeting out and, and reaching out to these people. Um, I've um, one of my conversations was with an 87 year old gentleman who came through and um, his his thing was um, Anish I don't feel valued I feel like a number when I go to my medical center it's a number it's a tick off and that um, blew me because um, my, my dad's 78 79 he's overseas but it comes to a point where where do you value these people they're not a number and, and that was different. The other one was a person in late 20s, oh, sorry, early 20s. Um, he was just struggling with just thinking, getting things straight, but having conversation over multiple appointments that we've had, he's now told I feel calm. So he's told a support worker. He's not told us directly yet, but he's told a support worker. Support worker gave us a feedback saying, I feel more calm when I come here. I'm not agitated anymore. I feel like they're listening to me. So those things are the feedback that we're getting. Um, but but like I said, there's still scope to improve lots more there. Let me just move on to the last slide for us. 
Um, in terms of inclusion, the key thing for us was um, we need to be mindful that people have their environment, their circumstances, their surroundings, which is impacting on the way that they might come out. And, and for us, it was making sure that we provide that room for them to converse. Not saying no, um, there, there's a way to to give them room. And as long as we give them a room, there is a story they have to say, and that story is important, whatever that might be. And um, in terms of satisfaction, it's is it is it sustainable? Um, it's hard work. Sincerely, it's 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 really hard work to just go through the whole thing. Um, but I think the best part about it is we can see the difference that it's making to people's lives. So if it is one person at a time, well, so be it. So that's that's our journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anish. And um, yeah, it's really great to hear that journey and the willingness to take the journey. I think the frenetic pace of medicine and general practice in general, I think, you know, it would just be so great if more could have that same approach to taking the time and, uh, you know, making it accessible. I think, you know, particularly in intellectual disability, um, there's a lot of talk about behaviours of protest and so on, and, you know, probably two thirds or more of the time, the behaviour of protest is in fact due to an underlying medical condition or an irritation or a lack of understanding um, in communication or whatever it is. And if people just slow down, understand this and actually look for what the underlying cause is, many of these things go away and people who have been classified all their lives as difficult, um, in fact, have much, much improved lives. So I think, you know, uh, what you're doing is, um, is fabulous. So thank you very much.